Hello once again and welcome to another glorious week of Siege of the Empire. Where I your host, Jordan AK Making Games on the Internet, take you on a wonderful journey through the world of Warhammer using Dungeons and Dragons with the help of my amazing and illustrious and incredible crew of six players, which will be five this week. Uh Brian's currently out, so uh his part will be played by myself. As well, Megan will be a little bit late, um, so we will be editing uh, what happens just at the very beginning to accommodate that. Should be no big deal. However, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I forgot what week number this is. I apologize. Oh well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check in with our group and see how everybody's been doing. Hello, is anyone here? I am. Hello, Jackson. Hello. Hello, Will. Okay, no Dalton. Good. Uh, this is the... Oh. Hello, Dalton. Hello. Dalton's here. Good. I was going to say this is the Jackson and Will show today, but... Da -na 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 -na. Yeah. Insert the music here. Um... <laughs> More importantly, uh, Megan's going to be a little bit late today, which is totally fine. Uh, and as you know, Brian's not going to make it, so we're really just waiting on Arcadi to, to get fully started here. Uh, I said Arcadi, I meant, uh, meant Liam. Liam. Where you all knew that. Uh, but in the meantime, let's find out how everybody's been doing. Dalton, tell us all about your week. What's been going on, sir? <sighs> Sorry, I just woke up. Uh, well, uh, shit. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, Will, uh, let's start with the... work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll start with Will. me. Oh, I was going to start at the bottom instead. All right. Uh, Will, tell us all about how you've been, sir. What's been going on Hello. this week? Hello. Yes, hello. Um, this week, uh, I mean, the most exciting thing for last week was my keyboard broke, which was very fun trying to navigate everything. Um, uh, did your keyboard break because you broke it? No, uh, it was in a apparently fit of... a bunch of the keys ended up shorting out between each other. So you press one key and it would be putting in another. But I thought maybe perhaps in a fit of British rage, you broke your keyboard. <laughs> Do you That's think an oxymoron, I'm... isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I know, that's why, rage. that's why it's great. Mm. So yeah, uh, I spent most of last week navigating purely with a mouse, which was interesting. Uh, but new keyboard now, so that's good. And uh, next week I'm actually starting uh, some archery classes, which is going to be fun. Is that by choice? Random or... fucking things. No, by choice. So... Which means I'll get to be Farron McKayb in real life. <laughs> wow, you're just how you're to just rape your own magic too. You're just gonna take it all the way, huh, Will? Yeah, definitely. Next <laughs> next thing you know, we'll see cosplay. <laughs> oh, I'll be LARPing before you know it, don't worry. Oh god, please no. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, that's great. I hope I hope you have a lot of fun with that. Uh yeah. I used to do a lot of archery as a kid because when we used to go on like uh like school trips and stuff that used to be a thing back in the day where like you would yeah. go to a campground that had like an archery practice area and i used to love the shit out of that yeah for me it was the camp always offered archery and i got really good at it but i was the best with the ad battle uh bless you the spear thrower ah uh, okay makes sense yeah, I was really good with that. I broke one of the targets. Didn't do that. One of the camp the camps definitely had a bunch of archery stuff, but nothing like that yeah. for sure. Well, like the Atlas is basically like a stick with a tooth in it. You put just a long stick in it, and I ended up uh, breaking one of the targets because I hit the metal thing that was holding it up with it, and bent the entire metal thing. Nice, well played. Mm hmm. Uh, is, that, is there anything else, Will, or is that basically it? Um, 
yeah, it's been a fairly quiet week for me. So take that as good or bad, depending on your preference. We'll go with good for now. Uh, Jackson, what about you, sir? How have you been, sir? I've been all right. You bowed to my anime prowess earlier this week, so that was pretty nice. Yo, let's actually talk about that. So, Jordan. Uh, since the first day that I watched it, I haven't had a lot of time to watch it. I think I'm on episode, like, 12 or something like that. Yeah, but so, you admit that I'm right in all matters anime. No, I admit you're right in this specific instance of anime. All matters anime. This, you can't. this you literal can't my weeb prowess. specific <laughs> instance mm-hmm, sure. of, of anime. Uh, for those who are out of the loop, basically, a while back I had asked Jackson what a good anime based on the other anime that I watched would be to watch, and he suggested Hunter x Hunter to me, and then it took me basically between that time two months ago and earlier this week, actually I think it was Saturday, um, to start watching it, and he was right. It was, it's exactly what I like. I'm, I don't like the whole premise of the fact that there's 12 year old boys that are doing a lot of this crazy bullshit. That seems a little yeah. weird and, and a little fucked up, but it's also Japan. So. Yeah. It's, it's for that. Like you got to ask, cause what I find hilarious, it's like they're 12 and everybody else is like 18 and 25. Right, and right, right. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it's, it's unnecessary. I feel, I feel that's what I feel like. I feel like it is unnecessary. Well, it, there's a reason for it, which kind of comes to light later. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe if there's a reason for it, I'll, I'll appreciate it more. But even in like schoolyard animes, they're usually of age, you know, like, yeah. But like plus, yeah. The kind yeah. of, the thing about it is that you kind of see is that the, the fact is they are like, the generation of hunters like that's kind of the point of it is that these were the uh they'll do a better job of explaining it in the anime but there is like a legit reason about why they're so young and able to do what they do gotcha okay well i will uh anxiously await that moment then it's just a little weird to me especially like and it's it's not even so much that like it's the kids versus not kids right like that I am squeamish in front of children. Trust me, some of the shit I've done in RPGs is far worse than anything that they've uh, <laughs> encountered. But for me, it is mostly what you said, Jackson, is it's kind of unnecessary. Like, they are oddities inside of their entire group, Yeah, and right? it's not like they don't mention it. It's a constant thing that they're... Right, exactly. About is that like, why are these kids doing this? Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and the other question that I... That, would make me care less but also like care about it is they mention it a lot but none of the adults anywhere are like hey why are these 12 year old kids doing all this dangerous shit right like nobody's there's no responsibility on the part of any of the any of the adults except for uh who is it miko-san yeah, the yeah the the aunt, the, the aunt they, right? Like aunt. in the very beginning of the show, that's the only time that anyone ever says anything or well, does anything. Kinda, well, it's kind of like the thing is that like there's the hunters, but then you start to and you know there's like the public face of them, but then you'll start to see, especially Dalton will probably tell you if he's gotten pretty far in it. There is a whole hidden side to what the hunters actually are. That really does like extremely explain everything, like oh, yeah. why these kids are there, why they're able to be what they are, things like that, and why people seem to be to be a little bit lackadaisical about they're going to be hunters. Right is the fact that they don't actually understand what the fuck a hunter is. Yep. Uh, I forget what episode I stopped at. Uh. Did you get so, to the uh, tower? Uh, no. Uh, oh, I mean, I mean, I did. The you're talking about the the jail, right? The jail. No, there's another uh, okay. tower, the okay. fighting tower. Well, you should... get fucking... Yeah. Oh, then oh, then yeah, you have I to be. That. Then you have to be very specific because if you so said tower you... to me, I would say the the jail. Uh, uh they so had just you... the episode that I got to was, um, they had just got out of the the jail. Uh, and they had just 
entered onto the island where they're supposed to hunt their targets. Oh yeah, that's gonna oh. be uh, that's fucked oh. up. That a lot of fucked up shit happened. Yeah, they that. just they just they went full Hunger Games. Is the is the the episode well, that I ended? What at. I love is like you kind of get that moment that shit's real when Hisoka just fucking takes a dude's arms off. Oh yeah, <laughs> just out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like he uh, is, he's fucked up. Uh, Jackson, to tell you where I stopped at. Uh, what is it? The when the group meets back up again after like a year. Oh, the Phantom Troop. Yeah. Around that arc. Yeah, where they're meeting for uh, Greed Island. Uh, something like that. Can't remember. Yeah, it's but... Robert, uh, Lorio, all them. Yeah, but yeah, uh, that's another th- moment where you kind of like um everything that was, the Hunter X Hunter takes another step up to. Uh, it's shit. Good. Yeah, but uh, we got sidetracked. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, my week. Uh, been in and out of hotels. Playing Switch, got this guy a five, fucking loving it. Oh yeah, are you are you on the road for work? Yeah, uh, yeah constantly, especially you know, I get a week off because I'm going to be sticking to the home PC. But next week I'm going to be all over, and then I am heading to Dallas on Monday, uh, not next Monday, but the twenty fourth. Well, fantastic. Sounds like a uh, a lot of work, but. You're, as long as you're liking it, right? That's all right. That's good. Uh, Dalton, are you awake again? Uh, I'm a little bit more awake. I needed to get water me because uh, I'm a little dehydrated. But um, yeah, so my week consists of uh, similarly work, but also uh, doing a, more work actually uh on the campaign that i'm running and getting a lot of cool ideas uh the more i put the more work i put into it the more i'm realizing uh how much more of a west marchian type of style game that that i'm creating uh without even trying it so uh that's neat and uh i'm gonna have a session tomorrow and we'll see how that goes so I'm excited because, yeah, I'm, I'm real excited for it. I wish you the don't know about the other. Don't know about the others though, because uh, it does seem a little daunting. But uh, when done right, it actually makes complete sense to do it this way. So with all the rules and stuff in place. So yeah, it's good times. Good times. Uh. Yeah, ended up finding out that the one player, me, pretty much dropped off on the face of the earth and don't know what happened to him. It's That'll happen on the internet. Two weeks. two weeks have passed by and not a single word from him. So That will happen uh, on the internet. Yep, it does happen. Unfortunately. But yeah, uh, that has been... Oh! Yesterday, I purchased Lord of the Rings uh, Extended Edition Blu-ray because I found out that it was only 40 bucks, and I was like, well, guess who has money? <laughs> so, uh, I am now the proud owner of the entire uh, Extended Edition for both Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So, the marathon's going to happen soon. It's going to happen. Well, fantastic. Uh, for those that don't know and haven't played it yet, you should also find four dollars and buy Shadow of Mordor on Steam. Uh, it's God, the, I love that game. It's the biggest no-brainer that you ever could buy. Is that the one that's basically what if Aragorn was Altair from Assassin's Creed? Uh, right. yeah, but also like in direct conflict with the Dark Lord, as opposed to. Uh, uh, I will say this, there Doing was one thing that always infuriated me about that game. What about it? The boss fights, when you fought against like, the human boss fights. Uh, what what in particular infuriated you about it? The Black Hand, when you fight him. Uh, or who am I thinking of? One of them, anyway, what annoyed me about him is it was just so repetitious. And if you fucked up one thing, like he would start to 
To be honest, I can't remember, but it, I know that it pissed me off at the time because I was like, there isn't a reason it needs to be this complicated. Yeah. Other than that, I love the game. There, there are a lot of things about the game that people really, really enjoyed and a lot of things people didn't. Um, to be fair, uh, I think that the game is a masterpiece, um, just in my really? opinion. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Um, I am extremely excited for the second one, too, coming out. Huh. I'm honestly surprised. Uh, I mean, I've played it, and, like, <sighs> for me, it was, like, the, the way I took the gameplay was uh, definitely, like, Assassin's Creed-esque. But, you know, Lord of the Rings. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. But what I did was I literally just ran around killing everything in my fucking path without doing the actual storyline. And I found out that I was just fucking murder hoboing everything. And then I was just like, okay, now what? Oh, I guess we can we can do the story now. Eh. So, I forget what part I stopped at. Uh... But I'll probably have to pick it up and finish it up because it does have interesting uh, stuff in it that I do. You, like, uh, you so. absolutely should. So I'll think about it. I'll think about it. So fantastic, uh, Liam. Hello, howdy. Uh, how have you been, sir? How's your week been? What's been going on? Uh, my parents have been in town all week. They just left this afternoon, so it's it's been a time. Uh, Good. Decently, decently good time though. All told, they they are good, well-meaning scientists. <laughs> um, so they're not trying to create uh, the next plague or anything like that. No, no. It's just, what do we want to do for fun? Well, let's let's lo- walk ar- along the river and you know rattle off the scientific names of finches that we see. I have an aunt and an uncle. An- Aunt and an uncle who are very similar to that. I can. They're not I can even bio. They're chemists. There's no reason for them to know the scientific names of birds. I don't get it. <laughs> Regardless, they're good folks. Basically. I mean, so uh, what, what you're saying is what it sounds like you're saying is they're parents, and you, you kind of just have to deal with that. <laughs> I guess are they? I, I feel like I feel like most people feel that way about their parents, like. I love them, and they raised me right. Oh, uh, oh yeah. No, there's that. Well, I mean, I've had a number of people tell me that uh, they find it remarkable how much I'm unlike my parents, and I have to explain. Yeah, I, I identified certain things about them and decided that I didn't want to be like that. But yeah, there's they do their best. Apart from that. Um, The, the campaign that I'm running is going well. Yesterday, the party had their first encounter with Arachelle, the traveling merchant, and her totally not related to any kind of warlock pact uh, bag of many bargains, which gives you random items based on how much platinum you stick into it. Seems good. Seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. They, they are immediately excited about that. Uh, they got a cloak that always billows regardless of whether it's windy or not. Uh, seeds oh to God. plant that grow <laughs> seeds to plant that grow kittens. What's uh, what's that famous game where the cloaks always are just like flying up in their faces and stuff? There's oh, a video game. Well, yeah, but there's like a specific like meme that has come out about a video Skyrim game. Skyrim with too many mods installed. <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking of injustice? No, it's something. Game. Continue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it <laughs> no worries. made me think um, of it. A vial of demon tears that cause terrible fear in anyone who ingests them, and then the party rogue walked in, tossed a thousand gold into the bag, rolled the dice, and got one of those goddamn manuals of quickness. Oh, so, shit. Yeah. He's, by the way, also planning a bank heist. He just got to this, this new island. And they're like, all right, we've got some plot things to follow up on, we've got some personal storylines, we've got uh, some basically like Ranger Olympic stuff that we can get in on. And her first step was, I am going to go figure out how to rob their bank. 
Fantastic. They're, yeah, yep, they're interesting folks. On the plus side, I mean, I don't need to prepare nearly as many encounters as I do. The problem is that I need to prepare stuff that it would never occur to me doing prepare, like what kind of security does the bank have? Anyway, that's been good. Uh, I finally Kate, got a data plan on my phone, so I downloaded this thing that you may have heard of called Pokemon Go. It's kind of cool. <laughs> wow. You are, you're, part, you're one of us, I guess, now. Uh, Cutting edge. I yeah. have yet to do it. You are, you're just, you're just up there, Liam. <laughs> uh, um, well, it's fantastic. It's good to hear that everything is going well, and including your campaign. And uh, I predict many uh, interesting Google searches in your future, um, because I know that I am certainly on some lists when I search for uh, things similar to that, like how to rob a bank and. <laughs> What type of security measures were there in old timey banks? It doesn't um, matter. This is a high magic setting. The problem isn't breaking through the vault door. It's trying to figure out how to disarm an alarm spell from a distance. It's true. true. Well, fantastic. Um, Brian is obviously not going to be with us again, and Megan's going to be a little bit late, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right uh, into it here. She. I know. Uh, she she's been on vacation all week. She went to go visit some friends. I guess I don't know. Uh, she's been basically ignoring and hating all of us for the whole week and realizing that we're all terrible people. So uh, if you could let that be known uh, when she gets you back, guys might be. that would be greatly appreciated. Um, is that uh, just, just understand that she, she told me that. She said, I think that everyone in Siege is terrible people, and that's why I'm going to be late today. Uh-huh. So uh, just so I don't you believe guys it. are aware of that. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's just Dalton she's talking about. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's probably true. You, you're probably right on that. Um, but she she wanted to be somewhat nice and include everybody so that he didn't have to pay for everybody. <laughs> uh, my week has been pretty good. Um, I ate way too much food on the fourth. Uh, my neighborhood had like a basically a block party. Nice. I ate way too much food, and there were a lot of fireworks going off. Um, so basically all i did uh with my time and anyway uh the other thing i've been doing is also preparing for this game which uh we left off in a bit of a um semi climactic slash tense moment of combat uh essentially most of last session was uh the part we'll call it party a for now uh, including of everyone except for Hannibal, basically, mm-hmm. had arrived at the um, the tavern where Garuldo was holed up and did some investigative work and uh, did the accidental walk into the door and um, unfortunately, uh, Farron was... You say accidental, I say courageous. Mm-hmm. Courageously walking through the door, Farron had unfortunately fallen under the spell of Garulda. Of course it did. Um, which gave her gave her access to information that she wouldn't have had otherwise, and the fact that uh, uh, there, there was other things going on, um, which triggered a combat scenario between the group of you, but uh, the primary enemy, I think, that was involved was the large pig-like bartender uh, demon, who, after... Uh, breaking a few of Morella's ribs across the bar um, had been wildly unsuccessful at doing much of anything except for, uh, I think there was a point where he did knock Daniela unconscious, but uh, yep. other than that, he's been, it's been a series of missing and crashing and breaking things and trying to hit everybody. And there's been kind of duking it out while uh, everybody's been kind of dealing with the, the little insect dudes that were flying around and uh, Garulda herself um, phasing in and out of, existence and trying to charm people and trying to you know injure people um and then the the final scene there had been aelin had run over to a group of um a group of uh wary um people that she had freed from this charm that garulda was holding over them i tried um and upon doing that had made garulda angry 
And so Garulda had essentially enacted more direct control over the patrons of the bar, and they were shambling like uh, mindless beings towards Aelin. Um, who activated her ability to allow her to uh, become like an angel. Um, and Garulda, having been scared, lost control or something happened, causing uh, the pig guy to kind of uh, get a severe migraine uh, and fall to his knees prone. Um, and that was kind of where we left that one. And the other simultaneous combat that was ongoing was with Hannibal, who had decided to infiltrate via front door the doc manix uh hideout and it engaged with a with a series of mutated creatures um between him kira and malia they were holding their own but there were certainly some cause for concern kira and malia were running out of some steam there was this large tiger-like mutant that was uh attacking hannibal at the time um and then there's this you know kind of gelatinous blob of uh mouths and eyes and stuff rolling around the ground fighting with Kira and Malia. Um I would say possibly more the the more dire of the scenarios was that one. Uh So, with that being said, let's let's figure out what where we were at with that if we come over here to this screen. Um so what we can see is uh 3 out of the 5 mutants had been uh dealt with essentially. Uh, the large, pale-skinned, clawed person, the the big, uh, big arm, muscular dude uh, with, you know, basically no bones in his legs. Um, the insect, ant-like, uh, six-legged creature, and Kira and Malia were facing off against the the mouthing blob moving across the ground, and Hannibal was facing off toe to toe with the with the tiger. Uh, or giant feline humanoid and it is technically within the combat kira's turn all right let's do this well kira and malia because they both get to go obviously they're gonna stab the shit out of the slime okay yeah stab away uh you should still have access to their character sheet so you can do the stabbing yes i can oh no dos tres and cuatro and all that. So all of those are hits. The slime is not particularly hard to hit. Um, but he is resilient. However, Kim, Kira and Malia make a, a hefty blow, and the creature looks injured at this point. Um, you can see that like it's leaving more and more slime kind of on the ground as it's rolling around in this mass of uh, body parts, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um... Are they going to, to move at all, or are they just going to stay there and continue stabbing and hopefully not dying? Yeah, if they move, they're going to get attack of opportunity, so... Okay. All right. Uh, so the next to go would be Farseer Obek. Now, I think Farseer Obek, over here in our little, uh, our little bar area, um, no. Garulda is currently still, uh, still active. We can see her here. And I think that uh, Obek seeing his opportunity to perhaps take a shot at her is going to do just that. Because it seems the most reasonable uh, reasonable thing to do here. And so we'll go ahead and make a... I'm going to make a regular bow shot because he has not been successful a whole lot on his... Uh, sharpshooter. On his sharpshooter. And he gets two attacks, so... Yep. Hey. Holy shit. Hey. Brian's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is how we do it right here. Uh, so this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Uh, deal dealing in the first blood to Garulda. Really, nobody else has touched her so far. Um, Sorry, and I didn't have to deal with Piggy. She's been well, not invisible. Invisible would be the incorrect term for it. For being fair, uh, but I am going to roll a couple of con saving throws on her because she has a spell active uh where is it there it is demons it's one of these things let me roll a couple con saves here does she have advantage Ooh. Ooh. okay well she fails anyway um so uh 
we see as the, as the the arrows strike her, uh, and it's probably because she's like temporarily blinded by this angel that has appeared, which all you'll all notice has a new token now. Uh, that's that's Aelin's new look right now, currently. Um, is is like temporarily blinded by that. Nobek seizes the opportunity and takes a couple of quick shots. Um, probably you know striking in the in the the, the shoulder or you know scraping across the side or something. Um, and we see, like, her skin begins to kind of, like, not bubble, but, like, shimmer, uh, almost as if you would, um, if you took, like, a, like, a plastic rug, you know, like, those, those computer mats and, like, shaking it, and it kind of, like, wobbles and makes that weird noise. We kind of hear that and see that from, from her, her shape, um, and blood doesn't come out, but we see, like, these, um... Uh, almost this sh these sheared portions of what we assume to be her skin, like, falling on the ground. Um, and I think that the fear kind of lights up in her eyes, and the spell that she did have active is no longer active. Um, and I think that we also see her face kind of contorts into this much less beautiful than it once was. Um, it, it, the, the jaw becomes more pronounced... Um, the nose we can see forms into, if you've ever seen somebody who's got like a broken nose, like three or four times, um, I think we see that her beauty is, uh, waning and draining from her, uh, her form right now with those two strikes may or may not affect things on the turns that they affect things. So we go back over to Doc Manic's den, and it is the uh, the creatures over here. It is their turn, and so in the interest of that, what are they under? This, and then we also have is that under monstrosity. Yes, it is. monstrosity. Okay, so the uh, the big ball of mouths is going to attempt to. Um, He's been going after Malia. Yeah, that's the one he's going to bite. Or attempt to, at least. An miss. 11 is a miss. Fortunately for her. Because he deals a lot of damage, he just can't hit that much. Uh, and then the, the tiger is going to attack you, Hannibal, with his scimitar. Um, yeah, he's probably just going hit, to hit you twice with his scimitar. First one misses, but the second one does hit. Wait, do I have my armor? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're you said you're wearing your armor, right? I don't remember. I I see you at twelve currently. Did you change that manually? I don't think I was wearing my armor when I went out. I did it. I took it off to look like I was, because I normally wear. Okay, does that so mean that like, both of them hit you? Well, one of them does, because I, um... Okay. You know. Okay, yeah. Flip a so you take the, so, the seven damage, but then... The eight. six. Uh, the ten hits me. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, so that's what I meant, that's what I meant. Like, both of them hit you because... Um... Yeah, but, um... Blood Jam. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, I see why you mean one of them hits you. You should have clarified that. <laughs> that you were using Missy Escape. That's why I was confused, because I was like, well, no, they either both hit you or... Seven damage. Uh, that makes sense. So, you burst out, teleporting away. Um, so then, I think, instead of using his second attack, uh, he will just... He kind of moves up to here, um, and I guess actually he'll move ten more feet. Oh. Uh, but he doesn't. He doesn't like come near you. He appears to be like kind of stalking you, um, kind of like see me, you know, like squaring off with you. Uh, you know you oh, me, you right? do turn invisible. That's right. No, I, 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 I didn't. That's why I said that. Um, well, then I guess then he's just gonna move to here. Uh, having not seen you anywhere, he'll move over here and he'll attack Malia with the 15, which uh, doesn't hit her. So that works. Yay. Um, these guys are all dead. 
makes it Garulda's turn. So Garulda, uh, having failed her her saving throws, um, you see her. She begins to like. Uh, she begins to look around. Um, oh, okay. Um, she begins to like look around, and you see her. She's kind of like almost frantically like looking around all of you in the bar roll me a perception check all right perception here we go uh yeah if you're in the bar okay it definitely includes you farron actually if it includes anyone, it includes you right now. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I see it, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, so it's not so much a seeing, but a hearing. Um, and Farron, you're, you're the most removed from like the active combat, so it's more appropriate for you uh, having a 26. In fact, a, a 18 is really what I was looking for. Um, so you hear the window shutters begin to like like smash against the outside and you see that the windows that are open the fire is like whipping up and like casting these sparks everywhere uh and a black shadow smoke begins to billow in through the windows um and begins pulling across the floor and in in a moment uh all of the lights in the building disappear and go out yeah i have to manually find all of them hold without deleting the map you understand yeah because that would be bad Yep. Do I still have that? I do still have that. Where? Like that. Without doing that exact thing. I mean, thank God for night vision. Oh, shit. Um, Jordan. <laughs> yes. Can you put a round counter on for us? Uh, yes. I think we agreed that this was, like, the seventh round or something like that. Yeah, I want to say this is, like, either the sixth or seventh round, but I just want to make sure. I, I thought sixth. Something, it's something like that. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I know what's happening. Back. I mean, I also just remember that my spell, uh, lasts for ten minutes, I'm pretty sure. No, it can't be right. Let me check. I'm going to check. While you do something. Mm -hmm. I'm just deleting all the lights. Take me a second. All right. All right. Looks like I gotta go to the camp. What is that? That is it. All right, 10 minutes. Okay. So it lasts for a while. Okay, cool. So all the lights are snuffed out. So those of you that, uh, you know, can't see in the darkness uh, are not able to see much of anything anymore. Um, and the, the pool of shadow begins to form up in this general vicinity right here uh taking up a large area seemingly right in front of right in front of Aelin, who uh is not mechanically glowing but is visible at night so i'm going to give her a slight i'm going to give her a slight uh like glow to her Cool. Now is the time to say, shine bright like a diamond. Uh, correct. Um, the pool of shadow <laughs> begins to, to form up here. Um, you see uh, this figure that has taken Aelin's place is vaguely Aelin-like. Um, it turns, 
towards the shadow and uh and you see something you see it do something that i think that all of you are very unfamiliar uh with seeing ever in your entire lives um but you see this figure that Aelin has become uh unsheaths the mace at its side and points towards the the shadow forming in front of her um and basically addresses it with the weapon um holding it in her hand uh and basically moves forward to engage whatever this shadow is forming and the form is very vague but as as the time progresses we see that it forms into a more coalesced form and we see the general shape of a woman uh large in in stature is a large creature clearly it is being like enhanced or grown larger by whatever this uh form is and i will reveal what this individual looks like to the group of you we see a a, a woman who has these blackened almost raven like wings sprouting from her back um as she kind of like descends from the shadows that have formed around her and sets gently on the ground she's giving off this like darkness aura it's actually a little bit harder to see like everything around her because these shadows are the shadows are kind of flitting about and um as well there's no light really in this in this room any longer um and uh and obviously not for for morella you can't see this um i realize one other thing i'll play it right there yep. there we go now you can see Aelin. um so for those of you that can't see though uh it's just like a vague outline you see just shadows kind of flitting and dancing about, but it is clear that there's another entity in existence right there. Um, that will go on Garuda's turn. The turn that they came into combat. Bing. That starts with this letter being purposely uh purposely vague cool um and so she she takes her her shape there um garulda uh is going to take on because this is her turn technically uh is going to take the disengage action and is going to use her little wings and fly over here she is running away, or at least appears to be, as she leaps over the bar and begins flying towards the back room. Um, which brings us to Daniela's turn, uh, who I think is going to take the opportunity of this beast lying on its back to uh, crush it a few times, because that seems the most reasonable. Uh, so, great sword twice with advantage. Misses on the second one. That's okay. Not great damage from Daniela, but whittling away a little bit more on what's going on. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. You I all think... have a chance to like give your give your immediate reactions to this this occurrence that has yeah. just happened. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure uh, uh, Daniela was going to go towards Aelin because uh, mm -hmm. she noticed. Uh, so. I, I just remembered that uh, part, but yeah. Uh, what Morella's gonna do? That is a good point. Uh, I think she's not. Go she still knows, understands the need to kill this thing, but she's gonna like slide along to this side. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. But I want to get a baseline for for what everybody is seeing. Morella, obviously, you can't see anything. All the lights have been, you know, doused, and you see shadows flying to and from. Yeah, or do you like that. yell anything in that moment? Like, what's going on? You know, like. That oh kind yeah! Of thing? Oh yeah! She's definitely going to yell something. <laughs> uh, she just simply says, "The shadows can't protect you." As okay. her spear begins lighting up. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not your turn. Oh, it isn't. No. 
It's technically Hannibal's turn. I was asking for an immediate reaction to the oh, incident that occurred. Oh, see, it's a turn like, order. A, a narrative that. reaction. Oh, right. You can't see the fact that Hannibal's is up is up next. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, so it appeared for me, but it's yeah. fine. Uh, I got thematically, you. yeah, her, which is also going to be mechanically, she is... Uh, she's not afraid of the dark no she has a method to deal with it okay yeah it, it, you're all in the same turn order actually so i guess it doesn't really matter um yeah if you want to go right now so so you're going to, to you're going I to mean, light it does your take weapon my action so i literally can't do anything else this turn because i've burned other things so that's just pretty, pretty much it and then okay uh sliding uh and so how much light does it give off uh pretty 20... much a torch uh 20 foot radius uh of bright light and 20 foot dim. Yeah. So a torch. Uh, you now have control over a little blue light with you. It's underneath your token. Yep. Okay. Uh, so now you can actually see a little bit better uh, what's, what's actually going on. This mm -hmm. woman that has appeared here. Yep. Um, great. Awesome. Peggy's going to get good at though. <laughs> next turn. Yep, next turn. Hannibal! Mm. You seem to be out of it now, but the creature, after looking around briefly for you, has joined in on Malia. Okay, I'm gonna walk over here. And I'm going to use my item. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna use inspiration. Okay. To get advantage on the roll. I'm waiting for the double ones. <laughs> I'm ready for the snake eyes. Nope. You're good. Okay, so I regain a spell slot. Mm -hmm. Then I let my visibility fall, and then I yell out, Over here! So you taunt can him. Back? Yes. Can I taunt him? Like, can I roll something to taunt him? Uh, roll me... I mean, there's not an annoyance check here, so I would Basically, say... I want him to come over to me to pick up our fight. This general Hannibal roll. Yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me how you do it, and then I'll I'll decide whether or not it's good enough. I don't think there's a role you need to do. Do I know that he looks like a big cat? He looks like his token looks. All right, come on over, you big pussy. <laughs> Saw it coming. Yep, it was That's telegraphed. Specific. Uh, yeah, and I think yeah. that, I think that the creature, uh, like, looks over at you, um, and kind of, you can see it ready itself to, to pounce in that direction. Alright, cool. Bring it. Alright. But first, Jericho. Mm hmm It's your turn. What's, what's your, what's your, uh, narrative <clears throat> inner dialogue when this happens? So... To, to recap, the odd sort of pacifist healer lady has just turned into some kind of avenging angel, and in response, the uh, demon that we've been hunting has called in shadows from outside, which have formed a larger, angrier angel, and they are now facing each other down. That is what it looks like, yes. I think this is the sort of situation that Jericho probably handles with denial. So how high up is Golda? <laughs> <laughs> How high up is what? I'm sorry. How high up is Garulda? Uh, Garulda is a uh, is a lieutenant in in the. Uh... No, I mean literally. Oh. what is her? Altitude? Oh, her altitude. She's she's technically on the ground, but she used her wings to move like okay. over the bar without having to take um difficult terrain. That's what that's what oh, I was okay. saying. The wings for yeah. Okay, that's all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think he's looking over there, thinking. I'm just going to let them handle that. I feel like they have the more more of the expertise about what's going on in this particular situation. Meanwhile, uh, Flying Lady needs to be stopped, but I don't think I can get to her without... Yeah, it's a 35-foot distance, so I'd have to dash to get there. And if I dash, I can't try to grapple her, can I? Uh, Garuda, no. You would not be able to. That takes some action. Yeah, okay. You know the layout of this place, though. Mm-hmm. Only so many places she could be going. I didn't see a back door, did I? 
No, there was not not to your not to your observance. There was no back door. So that's interesting. All right, I think uh, first he's going to draw the short bow and take a shot at her if he can. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah. Taps. Yeah, that's um, that's a hit. She she can't oh, see wow. it. Ah, uh, right, advance. You, yeah, you're you're still invisible. Okay. So. so just ping her with that, and then uh, I think he's going to run back this way, intending to try to uh, intercept her elsewhere along the way, and also probably giving Farron a, a comradely pat on the shoulder as he goes, saying, oh, that worked out well, didn't it? The invisible pat of inspiration <laughs> no that's just friendship i did abandon him last close session and you, you did abandon the ever-loving hell out of him last time yes he's fine <laughs> just prepare for when you're not invisible anymore <laughs> oh are we finally gonna have our rap battle yeah epic <laughs> epic rap battles of history uh Fender Mackay versus Jericho. <laughs> so, uh, this big beastie has to roll a saving throw. Uh, oh, I haven't opened his character sheet yet. Let's do that first. No problem. So he overcomes his, his whatever may have been affecting him. Uh, he stands up. Um, but that that is the rest of his turn. He can't do anything else this turn except for do that, basically. Uh, so Farron, it is your turn. What's your what's your immediate inner dialogue? Um, so I feel like that scene from Community where he walks in with pizzas <laughs> and the party's on fire. Uh huh. Uh, because this is my first turn in this bar so Morella and Daniela look completely bloody to what's ends. Uh I'm fine. Aileen now seems to be an angel, which I've never seen before. There's also this weird shadowy lazy thing. Uh all the patrons are now slowly moving towards uh that direction so yeah it's a bit strange <laughs> um yeah i think uh yeah uh i will go after garuda though uh you know i see her trying to scurry away mm -hmm. thanks to morella's light and, uh, yeah, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> nice sneak attack roll, though, I have to say. It was, yes. Uh, wow, good job. You, uh... That is good. Hit her with both of those for whopping 16 damage. Uh, she looks injured now. Um, you get the feeling that Gerilda's true power does not lie with her specifically. Uh, it lies with those she keeps around her. Uh, but I think that that was already pretty obvious from the from the from the get go. I mean, she did also try to charm me, so I'm not entirely thrilled about that. Um, I would like to mention she did charm you. Uh, you just eventually she, broke it. it she, she, she tried to other, charm him and also succeeded in charming him. <laughs> the others don't need to know that. Okay. Yeah, that is going to be one thing that Jericho might be able to hold over your head later. <laughs> I just got obsessive about which disguise to wear. Mm -hmm. Uh, Farron, uh, would you like to move? Is there anything else with your turn, sir? Um, how far is? Yeah, I mean, Daniela looks the most hurt. She looks pretty so... hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's give a. One of these. Hey, 
I actually rode Max for a healing ward. Nice. See, did, did you see that, guys? Did you see that? I everybody more than you. Everybody I saw it. More than you. <laughs> everybody saw it, but Aelin. Yeah. Oh, no, that's so infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to hold it down while she's not here, right? That's that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. also not going to be doing much healing in this current form. Uh, are you moving, Farron? Yeah. Uh, no, I think I'm okay. As okay. far away as possible. All right. So we see we see Angel Aelin, um, or this this angelic form, um, has like rise has risen to their to her feet or off her feet. Jeez, talking is hard. Has risen off her feet and is brandishing her weapon. And you see the weapon now. It begins to kind of crackle and sparkle with this like bright like yellow and white lightning almost um and you see uh you see the the uh angel alien like kind of lean back and then move forward quickly and slam into this other uh this other entity by moving forward and uh making some attacks uh Uh, she actually doesn't. Oh wait, no, she actually doesn't have it. Well, let me uh, let me write this in for her real quick. Okay, cool. All right. Wow. So uh, you see the angelic form just crush, and you see the lightning sparkle off of the mace and kind of lace through the shadows and illuminate it briefly like lightning would do. Um, creature takes some damage from that um and kind of like flinches back and then you see her rear up um to engage now that it is fully formed and has this vaguely uh vague woman raven like form there um Aelin is also Doesn't have a healing word. No, I think she'll hold the healing word for now. She'll hold the healing word for now. Um, but it is uh, Kira's turn. Let's go over and see how these two are faring, Kira and Malia. Well, I told them to focus on the slime, so they're gonna focus on the slime. All right. Oh no. Dos, tres, cuatro. You shits. Well, uh, two of those, or yeah, two of those actually miss, which is really hard to do versus these. But the creature is uh, definitely being whittled down fairly, fairly quickly. Um, as long as it keeps missing, I'm sure they'll be fine. Yeah, don't say that. Like, don't say that combination of words. <laughs> All right, let's see what Farseer Obek's going to do. Uh, so Farseer Obek has been plunged into darkness, first of all, um, which is certainly something of uh, of concern. Farseer Obek. I need to do this. Uh, has been plunged into darkness, but he, um, he is going to try and get away from whatever the heck this thing is, I think, is his best option right now. So he's going to go over here, uh, and he doesn't want to really engage with that big crazy lady. So I think that he's going to shoot at the pig thing. I'm going to take a shot with it. 
Uh, the first one hits, dealing seven damage. Not too shabby. Uh, and the creature is very injured now. It is perhaps at about a third of its reserves. Um, and then after Farseer Obek's turn, it is time to move on to uh, these mutated creatures here. So these mutated creatures here, back at the top of the order, and let me um, let me give you a, uh, a turn order now. Uh, this would be the start of turn eight. Uh, control U. For who have like uh, yeah. minute concentration spells. Yep, absolutely. Start of turn eight. Control C. We'll put it here. So we can see it on both. Excellent. Uh, so this creature, he is going to, or I should say. The slime is going to attack Malia again, pretty simply. It's it's pretty pretty mindless. It just need, it just wants to bite things. That one hits, however, doing oh, yeah. fourteen damage, and uh, requires st strength saving throw from Malia, please. I believe. Jackson? What? Oh, sorry. Strength saving throw, please. He was able to reach me? Uh, not from you, for Malia, for the thing biting it. Oh, sorry, I... I got something. Shit, sorry, work takes up a lot of shit. Succeed. Okay, cool. So not knocked prone. Uh, only taking the 14 damage. Yeah. The other creature, though, he is going to take an attack of opportunity from uh, okay. Malia. If you would like to uh, roll that attack of opportunity. Uh. That's a solid hit. Uh, so that's 10 and 20, 30, 40. He's going to get to here. Um, and then you see him kind of squaring off against you. Uh, mechanically, he's going to take the dodge action. Hannibal. But, uh... Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's, what right. he's, that's what he's doing right now. So we get back over to here, and... We have to, we have to roll for some of these, uh, some of these patrons, because they're going to start to become a problem here in a moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a uh, wisdom saving throw for them. Okay, they succeed. So I think that we what happens here mechanically is we see a couple of the commoners, and I'm going to delete the ones that this affects just so they're not on the not on the board anymore. Uh, we see the commoners. Some of them begin to like kind of shake their heads and and look around, um, and the potential list of aggressive targets has lessened tremendously uh but the others and since it succeeded i'll delete a couple actually and this one right too um so since it uh that these ones however are still unaffected by that and are going to move in their 10 feet god damn it And beat and beat. I think that's all. Oh no, there's still there we go. Um so none of them are quite within range to do anything yet. Uh Garulda herself though is as as expected going to Be moving around the corner and out of sight. Um, and then this this woman here, um, you can see she, uh, in her hand, made of the shadows coalesce into like this great maul, uh, this great like two handed maul in her hands. Um, 
And you can see that uh, she points at in Aelin's direction. Um, and we can see the formation of another weapon. Um, for all intents and purposes, it is floating kind of uh, spectrally in the air. And we would recognize the spell. Well, we may or may not recognize the spell. Uh, so a weapon forms, and it looks suspiciously like a large sword. Lambers. Suspiciously? <laughs> I remember. Oops. Let me turn it in such a way. And allow me to darken it up a little bit. Uh, it is a dark gray in color, almost blackened flambers with the, the wavy um, lines on it. And it slices at the, the creature that was Aelin. Um, but Aelin is able to, uh, you see Aelin like whip around, like bling, bring her mace up and kind of stop it, its blow. Um, but then... Uh, that's actually a, a bonus action, too. I don't know why I have action written there. Probably because I'm bad at this game. Um, and then the creature is going to uh, take this maul that's in its hand and just swing down on Aelin. Uh, that one hits. Dealing 10 damage. Uh, we see Aelin get kind of like, take that one to the shoulder, and but doesn't seem too put out by it. Um, and she kind of flares up, her wings kind of shine a little bit more brightly and uh, continues to engage with this creature. Uh, moving on to Daniela. Um, she really doesn't want to take. Uh, I guess she will disengage. She's going to disengage and make her way over here to this creature um, and kind of uh, as she's as she like leaps over the bar, um, she begins to like bang on her shield, trying to get the attention of this uh, this woman that's standing here, this fallen angel esque woman. Uh, but she can't really do much of anything else. Uh, which brings us to I'm actually just gonna since we're already on this page, uh, let's just go ahead and take care of uh, Morella and Jericho. Uh, so Morella, you're first. What would what would you like to do? Well, Piggy gonna get stabbed. So. Let's get Piggy stabbed. Okay. All right. So here is two attacks. And then I'm going to use the bonus action to knock down uh, prone. So first one. Yeah. Hit. Good hit. And second one. Okay. Also a good hit. And, yeah. And do, do, do. Alright, so it's athletics versus athletics, correct? Yep. Oh. Tough. So now that he's not focusing on Danielle anymore, um, he's able to turn his full attention towards you, and that's probably uh he probably has learned your tricks by now and is deflecting them. But he's also learning that my spear is uh quite deadly now that I've put potential deadly magic on it. Yeah, it does a little bit more. It burns him a little bit more. Indeed. So. Oof. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Jericho, it's your turn, sir. Who's moving this way? Uh, does that... No, that's yeah, for the turn way. order. Okay, cool. Yeah. And all I can them. see still are these naked dudes over here. Uh, yeah, I think that they're probably actually not there anymore, to be fair. Moved elsewhere, okay. Yeah, they, they've probably relocated themselves. Uh, so nobody in that room that I can see, yes? Nope, nope, nobody in there. Dashing? Uh, 
Still nothing. Huh. Um, That's a little odd. Do you want to roll a perception check? Sure. Yeah, roll a perception check for me. Perfect. Reveal everything. Uh, so you definitely hear a door open and close just past this. Just past this door right here. There's a door that opens and closes. Okay, well. Uh, no cunning action. Can't dash is a bonus action. Farron can never know that there might be something that Jericho is jealous of. That is as far as he can get. <laughs> Fantastic. So, let's, uh, let's head over to Hannibal. So, Hannibal, uh, this mm -hmm. creature is kind of like, you know, eyeing you up. Mm. Appears to be in an uh, evasive formation. I walk over to here. Oh, I look to right here. And then... And then I just ready in action to Ultra Blast him if he gets uh, to right here. Okay, so if he gets within... And also be prepared to fire if he jumps. Okay, if he leaps at you? Okay, yeah, yes. so so if, if he comes closer, you're going to Eldritch Blast him, I gotcha. Yeah, and I'm hoping to like, Eldritch Blast him into that wall. Okay. I am tracking. Good. Mm -hmm. Anything else from you? Um, are you sure you don't want to join? <laughs> uh, for a lot of gold. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he, uh, I don't think he, he recognizes it. Or I don't think he responds to that. Um. Also, is he a humanoid? Oh yeah, no. Again, he looks ex he looks exactly like he does in the token. He is bipedal with fully functioning opposable thumbs. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right, that's it. The yeah, hold my action to Eldritch Blast him if he gets close. All right. Uh, moving on, the pig guy. Samarella, he has only one. He only he has only but one focus now. Uh, and that is you. Yep. Bring it, piggy. And so I think that. Yeah. He just disadvantaged the two claws and one bite. They're all coming at you. Yep. So, <clears throat> first two claws. Second one hits, I think, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. All right. So that's. And then I have to make a con saving throw. Correct. Uh, DC of 10. <sighs> Do I want to spend my inspiration? How important is, is it to have advantage against the bite attack that is coming after this? Inspiration it is. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't need it. Yeah, it was but... close. It was close. All right, was... you maintain your concentration. Uh, and yep. then he's going to bite you with disadvantage. Yep. Missing. Whew. All right. The onslaught begins. Yep. So he, he finally lands a blow after God knows how many rounds of combat. Uh, he's finally successful in landing another blow on you, Morella. And he kind of, he probably like, <laughs> in victory. Farron, it's your turn. Um, yeah. 